took 30 cc's of, of his blood and we put them in our uh, kits, the Rubella PRP kits. Um, and this is the Rubella centrifuge. So this is spinning right now. Um, actually, the spinning is done, it's just slowing down. And then this will automatically pop open as soon as the rotors stop. Okay. All right, counterbalance. Okay, so here's the gentleman's blood. Amazing separation. So this dark area is the red, the red blood cells. Those fall to the bottom. We do not want those. The top is the PPP, and then in the middle is the PRP. So we want that for, uh, for him. So I'm gonna get ready for the second spin. All right, so we have our PRP here, right? And we don't want the red blood cells. So with the way the kit works is you just start to use this screw pusher. And what will happen is it will push up PRP. Add the syringe. All right. Yeah, so as you can see, PRP is coming up nicely into the syringe. All right, it's coming up here. This keeps pushing up. All right, now this is where we need to be careful because the red blood cells are now coming up into the funnel there. And we want to get just to the top. So, okay. So this is our um, PRP plus our PPP together. So now I'm gonna do a second spin and really concentrate the platelets and also lower the leukocyte count, the white blood cell count, so that it won't hurt as much today, tomorrow, and whatnot. So as mentioned, this is the PRP and PPP combination with a few red blood cells in it. What I'm gonna do is prepare it for a second spin by putting the fluid into a second kit. Voila. Now I'm gonna use a counterbalance and get it ready for the centrifuge. So one thing you need to be careful of is when we have our PRP we're gonna do a second spin on, you need to counterbalance it or else the centrifuge will start shaking violently. So this is 61.9 grams. And then the water counterbalance is 61.2-ish. So we're good. So then what we do is we take the counterbalance and put it in one of the buckets. And then our PRP, we're gonna put into the one right across from it, okay. Now we have this preset. So it's gonna be a five minute spin and this is gonna move its way up to 4,000 RPMs. While the PRP is spinning, I'm gonna answer a few questions that we get frequently is why do you use PRP with a regenerative product? Well, PRP by itself has been shown to be very effective for three, six months. The Hospital for Special Surgery did a study where they looked at about 25 patients and they looked at serial MRIs after the injections. And what they found is that the satisfaction was very high for upwards of a year, right? So that's the difference between PRP and a regenerative procedure where you're regenerating some of the tissue, like cartilage, for instance. So if you combine the PRP with the Wharton's jelly, not only are you preventing cartilage loss, you can hopefully increase the amount of cartilage that a person has, say for instance in their knee. One of the additional reasons that it's a good idea to use them together, and we do this routinely around the world, is that there are over 30 bioactive proteins in PRP including about a dozen growth factors. Now PRP is great for a lot of reasons. One is it's your own blood that's being used, so there's no 
chance of, of rejection or um, you know minimal chance of infection or whatnot. The Wart's jelly does not come from the patient. That's from a donor. But the FDA standards for screening are so so strict. It only can be used if all of that comes back negative. All right. So it's very impressive the extent to which it's tested for quality assurance. Um, so patients can rest assured knowing that um, it's very strict in order to be released for use. So time is, is running down on this second spin. Um, I'll show you what happens next in just a second. All right, so the second spin is pretty much done. This will open up in just a second. And then I'll show you what the PRP looks like um, after that second spin. Why do we do a second spin? Um, we do it a lot because we want to reduce the leukocyte count, the white blood cell count, so that it causes less pain and inflammation for, for patients. So um, it's a counterbalance. So here you go. You can see um, it looks very similar to when we put it in, but on the bottom, it's kind of hard to see this, but that's where there's a humongous concentration of platelets. Okay, so basically what uh, we're going to do is we're going to draw up, now there's about, I don't know, 15 cc's, but I'm going to mix this a little bit. Yeah, now you see it got cloudy, okay, that's fine. Alright, I just don't want to leave some platelets at the bottom. But just by doing the second spin, we've reduced the white blood cell count. We're going to use this screw pusher. Now, I'm going to attach the syringe. What you want is for the PRP to be concentrated above the normal baseline uh, platelets in, the, uh, in our blood uh, by at least uh, four to five times. And this does that usually upwards of like seven times. So we can typically get around a billion platelets per milliliter, which is a really good number. We have right at 15 cc's, but what I am gonna do is draw up At this point, what I am going to do is what's called photo activation. So in here, so basically this just goes right in here. Alright, we're going to turn it on for 10 minutes. And it is going to hit PRP with those three wavelengths, red, blue, and green, and it will, it's called photoactivation. All right, so this photoactivation, you do it for 10 minutes, that's what the studies have looked at, and basically when it comes out, it doesn't look you know, necessarily any different than it does when you put it in, but that's not the point. The point is to um, activate more growth factors and get better outcomes along with the, uh, the Wharton's Jelly product.